We're good. And attack this one, Bremer. Come on up. Go, go, go. Come on up. Attack it. Be aggressive. Okay. Remember our first lesson? We talked about holding the racket properly on the forehand. Are you reminding yourself to do that? On the forehand? Yeah, not to hold it too tight in uh -huh. here with the fingers, but to have more of a spreading and an angle. Uh -huh. That's going to allow the racket to go back further. Okay. And it, it's doing that to some extent. Remember, on the backhand, there's less twitch, which is great. Uh -huh. But you got a huge gap between the left hand and the right hand. When you switch your grip, when you hit a forehand, a backhand comes, when you're here, slide down all the way like this. Yeah? Let me see. Let me see you do that one time. Yeah, sometimes I feel like I was getting used, sometimes I was going too high. Yeah. And I feel it. So I'm trying to get used again. Even, low, even lower than that. Here, take a look. You go, the right hand will be in the same position as always with the pinky towards the edge. Okay? And the left hand needs to go so it's like right next to the right hand. Okay. There shouldn't be any gap. Okay. If you hold it up here, you're basically making the racket shorter. The okay. higher you go here, the shorter the racket will be. Okay, so by going lower, you have more length here. Okay. You get a longer lever. Okay. All right. Good. Finish with the back end all the way. Come on. One hand. Forehand side, come back to me. Good job, back in. I was hitting the ball back to you with my volley and you were hitting a certain way. I want to just make a test and feed you the ball soft okay. and I want you to hit it very hard into the corners. Okay. All right, and let me just see one specific thing that I'm looking for. You want a baseline and you go in the corners aggressive. So Bremen, I have good news and bad news. Okay. On the forehand, you're doing fine. On the backhand, there's a little bit of a problem. Let me explain. So when I was rallying with you and volleying to you, the ball that was coming at you from me had sufficient pace. Okay. So when that's the case, when the incoming ball is fast, you can get away with a certain style of technique. In other words, your finish can be shorter. Okay. All right, the overall, the stroke can be shorter. So in other words, you don't need as much body uh -huh. because you're taking the pace out of the incoming ball. So your backhand, when we were playing, you was going from here to like here. The stroke was stopping here. Mm -hmm. And that was fine when the ball was coming fast. However, now that I've fed it very slowly, you can't do that anymore. Okay. And you need more of a full swing. So the good news was that on the forehand, you were doing much better. You had a, a full body swing, meaning that you have full torso rotation and the body was helping the racket out. However, on the backhand, not so much. So when you take a look at your back end in slow-mo, you'll see it's going from here and then it stops right here. Like the chest is pointing straight forward instead of going a little bit more this way. So what we got to try to do, and I'm going to feed you these next few balls soft, you have to use your body more on the back end. There are several things that you can do. The easiest tip that I can give you is something that's been around for a long time is hit yourself in the back. That in itself might fix everything. So when you attempt to hit a backhand, think about hitting yourself in the back like this. Here, watch, watch me. You see where I'm hitting myself? You see it right there? It's like my, my left shoulder blade. And don't do it too hard, don't hurt yourself. But you wanna hear that thud of the racket hitting your back, okay? Do it again. There you go. Okay, come again. All right, and come all the way to the middle, all the way to the middle, and again. Okay, I'm hearing a thud, that's good. Okay, come again. And one more time. All right, I'm hearing you hitting yourself on the back, and I said this might fix it by itself, but unfortunately it didn't. And what the mistake you're still doing is on the finish, both of your elbows are pointing forward. So your torso rotation is limited still. Okay. So even though you, you're hitting yourself in the back, this is not resulting in, in the 
right elbow going further back and getting a little bit more torso rotation. So now we have to make a different intention on the finish and we're gonna to try to finish towards your car right there. So you're gonna finish with your elbow towards where your car is parked. That's gonna be more rotation. There's gonna be more body involvement on the two-hander. You'll get more power and it'll feel a lot more comfortable. More. If I froze the finish there, your right elbow is still pointing somewhere there. Yeah. I'll do it again. One more time. That one was like, the elbows were actually pointing forward. Both of them. Let me just test something. Go ahead and go in your finish. Go in your finish. Like finish the backhand. Make sure you go sideways. Turn sideways. Turn sideways. Okay. And go ahead and do, your, do a dry swing. But don't do that at the end. Like no. that's good. That's going to make it easier. So I want you to, I want you to turn sideways and swing. Just swing and finish. Okay. Don't come through at the end. Just stay sideways. Okay. This elbow right here, more that way. Can you make that little twist at the end? That's right. All right. Another one come. Did not like that one. Can I show you a few? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'm gonna stand here so you can see it. You just pay it. You can stand right there. That's a good spot to stand because you'll see my, you'll see my finish. You'll see my right elbow. Take a look at this. You see this? And I take take a look at yours. It's more like this. You see how much less movement there is with the body? Let me show you one good one again. And take a look where my torso ends up and where my right elbow is. You see that? So it goes all the way here. You see, it's almost like a golf swing. You ever play golf? I, I have an idea. Yeah, I okay, it's very similar to a golf drive. I always make that comparison because you're going here, here, and then all the way here. You see that? Now, whether that back foot comes through or not, that's going to help, but I don't want the back foot to make the turn for you because that back foot is going to come through at the very end. Okay. okay, so we'll just focus on making that turn with the torso in isolation for now. What do you think? Tell me. I still, it's still, still point forward, right? Because I feel like, yeah, I'm, I feel like I'm not, I'm trying to stop. I'm trying to focus on that last finish instead of just going through. But go through your whole stroke, but have the intention to finish more at the beginning of the stroke. Okay? Let the contact happen by itself. That was the best one you hit so far. Your intention has to be on the finished product. What happens in this area, let that happen on its own. You're already doing good. You actually have a pretty good contact on the back and you have good feel on that side. Don't worry about it. Much, much better. That's looking way better. Come again. Oh, what do you think? Yeah, much better. So much better. Bremen, it's night and day, man night and day look at these back ends what do you think you got it you got like to you there. it's a little uncomfortable because i'm not used but i, I try to exaggerate that you I have to exaggerate it. because it's going to feel like an exaggeration because yeah. you've never done it yeah exactly. it's going to feel weird it's going to feel wrong but the difference is that first of all the stroke looks more continuous, looks longer. It doesn't look so hacked up and so short. When you stop a stroke here, it's going to look short. And I feel the difference. I understand now because when I'm playing now, yeah. whenever it's a little slower, yeah. I have all the time, but I, I'm not able to, I'm hitting on the net just because the technique is not there. I, so, I feel like, like it's not, I'm not giving the right, the top spin to go because I'm not finishing. I, I feel, I think. Yeah. Well, it doesn't have to do so much with topspin, but what, what you're experiencing is a, a generally a comfort on your backhand side when the ball's coming fast. Uh -huh. But then when you play against guys who don't give you anything, they're uh -huh. dinkers and they hit it to your backhand, and you hit the shot without finishing all the way, uh -huh. it's going to feel like as if you're not getting any power. Yeah. Not getting any spin, sure. Exactly. It's going to feel terrible. Yeah. So what I'm telling you here is that there's a time and a place for the back end that you had before. For example, when somebody hits it very fast mm -hmm. on the return of serve, if you're picking a ball up from the baseline, hit it that way, no problem at all. But when there's time, you gotta take a full swing with the entire body being involved, like you're doing now. No, for sure, yeah, definitely. And when you play dinkers, now all of a sudden, you're gonna be able to generate power. 
of no pace because your whole body is involved. Now let's do 10 more, okay? Love that one, Bremer. This is clean, man. Look at this back end. This is crazy what's happening right here. Come on, four more. Bremer, you're on absolute fire. Three more. Come on. Two more. Nice work. Here's another good news. Remember our first two-handed backhand lesson? Oh, yeah. Remember we had that twitch? Yeah. The racket was twitching back there. I don't see it anymore, so that's completely yeah. gone. You were able to um, get rid of that, which is and great. And I feel like I'm, I'm turning much warm. Remember? Okay, okay. I was going to tell you that next because it's gotten a lot better, but it can be even a little bit yeah. more. more. Yes, that's my next tip to you okay. is that you need a towel? Yeah, let me just... Yeah, go ahead. It's crazy, I'm sweating. It's so humid. If you imagine me hitting this way, so if I copy your back end, you're, you're somewhere here in this area. And that's not bad. This is not the end of the world by any means. You can hit a quality back end that way, but it's not like 100% optimal because if you take a look at the greatest two-handed back ends in the world, all of them, without any exception, they go here. Meaning that the shoulder blade is towards the incoming ball, but it's not only that they will also create a tilt in their shoulder. So they will go not only here, but also a little bit here. Okay, naturally what that does, also it gets the racket head to be a little bit higher above the grip. Okay. All right, so look, you get a backhand, you go here. This, a little bit of a dip okay. and a big turn so the shoulder blade is towards the ball. And now look here, the racket head is a little higher. You won't maintain this position. Naturally, the racket is gonna drop down and you get a little bit more okay. acceleration from that as well. But most importantly, you get a little extra rotation into the contact, which will result in more power. Okay. All right, let's try it out. Nice, Bremer. That was maybe the best back you hit today. Strong finish and a strong setup. You felt it? This is great. What I'm doing now, like when I have you come from the middle and I'm feeding the ball diagonally here, I'm making it easier for you to do a lateral step. What I mean by lateral step is that your right leg is going to go across the left leg, which will naturally put you in a position where your body is turned. Let me show you this way. Look, if I step this way, when both my feet are parallel to each other in regards to the side fence, now I have to force the turn here. And this is sometimes a position you'll have to be in, especially from the middle of the court. However, if the ball goes to the side, naturally, it's going to be very natural to not come up here and go like this, but to go with a lateral setup where this leg goes across and now there's a gap in here but look when I do a lateral step look how naturally I'm turned this way okay so when I'm feeding the ball like this I want your right leg to go across the left leg mm -hmm. and more or up to the side and then cross no it's no already no the, the way you move in the most efficient way is in the following way when you're in a baseline a ready position okay and you observe the ball in the ready position, you say, okay, it's a backhand. The first thing you'll do is turn towards the backhand side. Okay, you're gonna to turn towards the backhand side. Now there might be a one side step this way, mm -hmm. but there might not be sometimes, depending on the severity of your movement. If you have to sprint, you're likely not gonna go like this and this, you'll turn and sprint right away. But generally with a little bit of time, there'll usually be a position where you'll, you'll step here and then you will run this way. There's absolutely no need to sidestep to the ball when you're moving okay. towards it laterally. When you're recovering, yes, you want to move laterally. When you're moving towards the ball, in your mind, just think, I'm going to move in a natural way. I'm going to, I'm going to turn and move forward like this. When you're recovering, then you can be more lateral. Because when you're in recovery, you have to be lateral because you have to be able to change directions fast. And your only concern when you're running to the ball is getting there fast enough. How do you move faster? laterally versus like this you move faster this way right okay now let's try it again lateral step if i took a picture of your feet they're still in the same level right here this leg has to go a little bit more here do not be afraid to step out with that leg okay even more do it again back to the middle lateral step come on now we're talking here we go Even more, Bremen, exaggerate. Can you feed me one? I'll show you. Feed me one with your hand. You see lateral step on the back end. Go ahead, feed me one right there. Perfect. So even though that was short, I still made lateral. Go again. Oh, this is tough. Bremen, this is tough. Okay, feed underhand. Otherwise, I'm too slow to react. Perfect. 
Ah, and I missed it, but you saw the lateral step. Give me one more. I want to make it. Oh, there you go. Beautiful back end, right? See my right elbow going there? You saw the setup was like this. That's what I want you to do. Because when you step that way, the turning of the shoulder happens by itself. It happens naturally. Oh, that's just maybe the best back end you hit all day. What a clean back end, man. That must feel good, doesn't it? All right. And I understand. I, can, I have the feeling, you know, what you're saying. I, from before, from now, I can feel the. It feels use. different, right? Yeah. Yeah. So let's recap. We have to finish the right way, but also preparation is important. Very important. Now, one thing that I'll say: there's exceptions to everything. So, the way you're hitting the back end without the preparation will also sometimes take place. Like especially in emergency situations, especially depending on your location in the court. So maybe from the middle of the court, you'll be more often forced to hit it like that. Return a serve. And I'm talking about ideal situations where you're perfectly set up. The way you were hitting the back end there is the best way to hit it. And again, lateral setup, finish all the way. Clean. You got a couple more. Last one right here, blast it. Yes, that's the one right there, man. That's the one. Nice work. Thank you. Very good. Nice. A big improvement from last time we played. So the first two sessions that we had, this is our third session today, they helped a lot. There was no more twitching on the backhand. On the forehand, he had absolutely no lag, remember? He was going like this. So there's more lag on the forehand now. It's, it's improving a lot. And now with these little corrections here, you're gonna keep getting better and better. I think you have a lot of potential, man. You're in great shape. And you just gotta keep going, okay? Yeah. Nice good. work, man. Thank you. Very good, very good.